alongside VFL and Huntsville, Alabama native Jason Swain. I'm Josh Ward. Swain, plenty of history for you with Alabama. Being from Huntsville, recruited by Alabama, choosing Tennessee, playing and winning against Alabama, 3-1 and one during your four years at Tennessee. But uh, take us back. Take us back to the history of Jason Swain at the University of Alabama. Uh, outside of Tennessee, there's probably not another – you know, program or campus I went to, you know, during my recruitment the most. Uh, went to Auburn several times. Uh, went to Alabama. Um, they used to have Nike camps. I think I did another camp there before. Uh, went down uh, with my high school coach. Sat down with Dennis Franchone. Uh, just us, you know, three in a room uh, talking about being from the state of Alabama and feeling like I need to play for the inst- school state. And uh, he asked me, did I feel like I needed to? And I told him no. And I remember the car ride back to Huntsville, my coach was like, I can't believe you said that. Looked him right in his face and told the coach, you know, no, that you didn't feel obligated. I was like, well, he asked me a question. I was going to tell him the truth. And I remember the conversation we had talking about how he's going to sign an extension and he planned to be there for a long time. And um, that's when he up and left and went to Texas A&M. But they had this grand plan to – you know, be able to throw the ball a lot to the receivers. And I had saw what they were doing with Tyler Watts and going, you know, option and doing all those things. And I just – I didn't want any part of that. So, Franchon left. Uh, they bring in Mike Price. And he's in my high school the the, the next day that he's hired. He's drawn up four and five wides because of his time there at Washington State. And before you know it, he's gone. Uh, and then Mike Shula gives me a call. So, I got recruited by three different coaches in you know, span of a couple of weeks there at Alabama. Uh, I went to the Iron Bowl a couple times as a as a recruit. Um, you know, been down there visiting friends. That went to my high school, so I was very familiar with Alabama, the quad, all that, all that good stuff down there. Um, I just I just didn't want to go, and I did not take an official visit to Alabama or Auburn because I had been down been down there enough. Um, I was honestly kind of tired of everybody from Huntsville either. Making making you pick between Alabama and Auburn, it was annoying to me. So you know I couldn't wait to to go to uh, neither school and leave the state. But I remember making making my choice, and I committed uh, in December. And when I when I did that, this was during a time when um, Alabama got hit with the sanctions with uh, Albert Means, the player from Memphis, and you know Coach Fulmer was accused of, of snitching and um, Bama fans were not happy with Coach Foreman. It was very volatile during that during that time. Um, the time after I committed to the time I arrived at the University of Tennessee was probably the reason why to this day I feel the way I feel about Alabama Week. And a couple of things happened. First thing was that I got death threats in the mail from um, a Bama fan. And that was just one letter. I, I hate when people cast a broad net on our fan base, and I won't do that to anybody else's, but that one person decided to send a death threat in the mail to an 18-year-old. Um, so that was the first time. The second time, the second thing is what set me off for sure. So my junior year, my senior year, my high school coach was was amazing and making sure that I was prepared academically. I'm not a great test taker. I uh, had real terrible test anxiety to where I would freeze up and just kind of just forget everything I studied. And uh, standardized testing was not my forte either. So his wife worked at Buckhorn High School, which is the same high school that uh, Ben McKee went to, same high school. Kyle Wright, uh, Atlanta Braves pitcher, uh, went to. And, and so – Buckhorn was closer to my house than it was Grissom, my high school, which was 30 minutes away. And so I would leave practice early and go do ACT testing and then just go home. And my first time taking ACT, it was, it was not good at all. Very, very bad, very low score. So I just continued to do the, the, the ACT prep courses, continued to work. Um, I had took two tests in Huntsville, did not make the grade I wanted to make. And so my coach told me, you need to take as many as possible. Well, there was an extra test being offered in Atlanta, Georgia. And it was a Saturday morning after a Friday night football game. 
So we play the game on Friday night, and about 3, 30, 4 o'clock the next morning, we leave Huntsville to Atlanta. Now, my great uncle is 93, 94 years old right now. So in 2002, you can imagine he ain't driving fast. He's not a fast driver. So we left early. It took all the four hours to get to Atlanta. So we get there um, in some high school in, in Atlanta, and I, I took the test, the ACT test. And that was a test that I was able to qualify and be good to go. Well, a high school counselor decided to call into a very famous radio show in Birmingham. That show is now on SEC Network. You can put two and two together. But this counselor decided to call in to this radio show. And on live radio said that I did not take my ACT, that there was no possible way that I could be in Atlanta to take that test when I had a late night game Friday. You know, they make these things called vehicles that you can travel from one place to another. And me and another high school athlete, she played on a volleyball team, she also had to take the test. So my uncle took us to Atlanta, I take that test, and I, and I, and I pass it. If I had known what I know now, we would have sued her butt for libel, no doubt about it. So I get here to Tennessee, I mean, I spent the first couple of, my, couple of weeks in a compliance office because of all that stuff. So Coach Former and I really uh, was able to, to, to kind of get close because of, of, of that situation. You know, he was being sued. You know, we went to um, – a home game down there, Birmingham. He was nervous. Remember, he couldn't go to media days one one year uh, because he was going to get sus- subpoenaed. So I was kind of part of that drama there in the in the mid two thousands because guys like me, Aaron Sears, Jason Allen, you know, we decided not to go to Alabama. But ever since that happened, man, I just I always circled Alabama on the calendar, and that's literally two people that did something just just really heinous, man, to an 18-year-old kid, right? Um, but those two people are the reason why I always circled Alabama on the schedule, and I feel the way I feel now about Alabama. And I got some really close friends of mine mm-hmm. who are Bama fans, um, and I got some family members who are Bama fans. But they know how I feel, and they understand how I feel. And, and know that people situation. that went to play at Alabama. Yeah, absolutely. Right, that you competed against. Yeah, so yeah. they know how I feel, and they respect how I feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's that's the reason why. That's the backstory. Uh, of why I f- feel the way I feel about um, that school. Yeah. So I, I joke with Swain on the show about being from Huntsville and it's Alabama week and all that. But uh, there, uh, thanks for sharing that. That's a little more history backstory that some have heard, some have not. Uh, why it goes a little bit deeper than yeah. you just being from Alabama and Alabama being a rival. Yeah. So I, I reached out to, to, to one of my uh, old teachers and I asked my old teacher, I was like, hey, where is such and such? The person that did that, yeah, and I was like, "Well, tell that person to go to hell." Just like, well, <laughs> just why I want Alabama to go to. So I haven't forgot, man. Yeah. I haven't forgot. Every year I think about it. So uh, I want this win probably more than anybody. 